Keeping track of a video game mythology is hard. Like, really, really impossibly hard. Harder than a film or book, and why? Because the average game runtime stretches into the tens of hours, sometimes even hundreds. It doesn't help that as the medium has become more popular, to the tune of billions of dollars in 2018, game worlds have grown at a startling rate. Monitoring any number of plot threads, possibilities, in-world lore rule sets, and player agency running throughout is a mighty tall order, and one scores of developers fall victim to. I'm Scott from Okota.com, and these are nine video games you didn't realize stupidly broke their own rules. Also, spoilers follow. Check the description below to see exactly which games we're going to be talking about. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding, ding, done. Desmond couldn't stab Lucy, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. First up, The Rule. After being revealed at the close of Assassin's Creed 2, the Isu, also known as the ones who came before, a race of gods who helped bestow the mythical powers of Eden with fancy mind control powers, take hold of Desmond's mind. Commanding him to kill Lucy as she was masquerading as a Templar, we were all suitably shocked that our hero could be effectively weaponized so easily. But wait! The whole point of the Assassin Order was that these were the free-spirited humans who could break free from the Iso's mind-controlling spells way back in the days of Adam and Eve. Where legions of humans were forced into servitude, the Assassins forged their own path, hence the entire role of the Assassins being the manifestation of their mantra, nothing is true, everything is permitted. It means to rebel, break free, understand the shackles of your surroundings, and learn to reach past them. Desmond is of course descended from thousands of years of Assassin blood. I mean, he's played up to be the free-thinking, peace-bringing messiah in Assassin's Creed three after all, and should never have succumbed to Isu mind control. Number eight, Kara cuts hair that doesn't exist. Detroit become human. The rule. Set in a high-tech, inevitable future, androids cater to our every whim. Cooking, cleaning, taking all the manual labor jobs, they're manufactured to aesthetically be indistinguishable from humans, down to skin tone, hair, eyes, etc. For the character of Kara's story, she's purchased by an abusive father to help around the house. After eventually gaining sentience, fighting the man and going on the run, she and child Alice hole themselves up in a motel where Kara cuts her hair to help go unnoticed. But wait! Android hair doesn't exist, and is instead some sort of holographic projection. Even Android's skin color changes and disappears, as is shown in both Connor and Marcus' storylines when they mind meld with NPCs, and when Kara and Alice are reduced to their factory white shell forms at the close of the game. We literally see Kara turn off her skin and hair, despite the earlier scene. Not to mention, Kara is not remotely unique. She's a factory line produced android for mass consumption. Cutting her hair doesn't detract from her overall appearance being something that tens of thousands of people in this world would know and recognize. Point being though, just what the hell was Kara cutting? Number seven, Shelby could hide his own thoughts? Heavy rain. The Rule. Dealing with the rampant killing spree of the origami killer, private detective Scott Shelby takes the case on behalf of various grieving parents. We see him go through everything from discussing former victims to taking care of small babies, gunning his way through a suspect's array of bodyguards, and all round progressing the case piece by piece. Near the end of Heavy Rain though, it's revealed that Shelby was the killer all along, masterminding the scheme from the inside out. He supposedly used his role as a detective to keep tabs on parents after his own failed him, leaving his brother to die. But wait! Heavy Rain doesn't have a hood, so level objectives, hints, and key pieces of evidence are highlighted to the player through a character thoughts button. Done by holding L2, you can see your character's thoughts at any given time. Why then was Shelby lying to himself as to what his role in all of this was? Why was he wondering who the killer could be or how he was going to go about the investigation? Why was he worrying about things going wrong? Was it a crowbar in plot twist for the sake of nothing more than in the moment shock value? Surely not, Mr. Cage. Number six, the Hillian shield breaks despite being indestructible. Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. The Rule. As the latest game in the timeline, according to both the Hyrule Historia and Legend of Zelda Masterworks, Breath of the Wild exists way in the future, when all the events of past titles and their heroes are essentially tales to the current populace of Hyrule. Equipment passed down across millennia then, from the Master Sword to anything once denoted to be indestructible, should stay the same, no matter how much the characters and events get changed or embellished. Where the Master Sword has never actually been referred to in-game as unbreakable, the Hyrule Shield was, and I quote, imbued with heroic power, making it completely indestructible. This this quote comes from Skyward Sword, the latest official retcon of Zelda canon being that it's a prequel to everything else. But wait! The Hylian shield straight up breaks in Breath of the Wild. Did Hyrule's finest smiths just forget how to make unshatterable shields? At least the Master Sword is a mythical, heavenly item given power through magic and can be said to wax and wane as the game see fit. It's plausible, though annoying, that it could run out of energy, but Hylian shields? They don't break and never have before, so why now? Number five, ghosts can revive you until they can't. Destiny. The rule. 
One of the many benefits of the traveller stopping by Earth, ghosts bring with them a ton of supernatural mythological powers, one of which being unlimited resurrection. This is actually leaned on in Destiny 2's intro sequence where, after you've been separated from your ghost, any deaths are spelt out as permanent. But wait! If ghosts can resurrect you infinitely and whose operation is only contingent on the traveller not being destroyed, why do we have no respawn zones? Do the ghosts just see your lifeless body and give up? Clearly the answer is because video games, but Bungie could at least have factored this into the wider story in some fashion. Even after the villainous walking mound of kebab leftovers that is Gaul started locking the traveller down, it didn't affect spawn rates or anything of the sort following that initial hiccup. It means that we can conclude that ghosts provide the key to immortality until they don't. How poetic. Number 4. The Reapers are both infinite and created. Mass Effect 1 and 3. The Rule. First mentioned in the original Mass Effect when you come face to hologram with Sovereign, he states, after Shepard inquires as to who built him, that the Reapers have no beginning, as we are end, we are infinite. So far, so believable. Some cosmic force that wields chronology itself is certainly outside our own perception of time, so have at it. I mean, I'm sure we'll all find out why this interstellar Lovecraftian horror is bearing down on little old humanity and the neighbouring galaxies' races in time anyway. But wait! As revealed in the Leviathan DLC, it turns out the Reapers aren't immortal after all. They're created by an elusive race known as the Leviathans, first mentioned in the original game as part of the Planet Jartar's biography. See, Bioware's original ending for Mass Effect 3 involved the Reapers trying to stop a universe-wide collapse involving Dark Matter, thereby keeping their described immortality intact. But this was scrapped after a sizable leak and EA made them write a new one. The result is one game saying one thing and another contradicting it. Bioware did pull from a small passage of text in the first game as a way to make it feel more canon, but this is a sad state of affairs for what should have been remembered as one of gaming's finest sci-fi franchises. Number 3. Big Boss Never Suffered – Metal Gear Solid 5 The Rule Topping the family tree of influence when it comes to Metal Gear's newer timeline, Big Boss is a real force to be reckoned with. Showing up as a premier warmongering tyrant to be brought down in the original 2D games, even his corpse sparks conflicts and wars around who it belongs to, alongside who should have access to that all-important best soldier ever DNA. This juxtaposition of villainy and elite skills is locked in, but what made him turn to the proverbial dark side in the first place? The Phantom Pain was set to finally, definitively provide an answer. But wait! Though the entirety of the game shows Big Boss going through everything from being betrayed by one of his comrades to executing half his own troops to save them from a viral outbreak, it's all for naught, as this Big Boss was a clone. Metal Gear Solid 5 ends by making a character you created at the beginning the clone of Boss you've been playing the whole way through. The real Big Boss was off around the world, readying himself for the events of future games and building his army of disaffected soldier types. Nothing about what happened to you or the clone mattered in as much as future characters only interact with the other big boss, and that boss still goes from hardworking soldier to maniacal warlord at the drop of a hat. Number 2. The Song of Storms Paradox The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time The Rule Key to progressing through the game, the Song of Storms is learned from Guru Guru inside Kakariko Windmill. You learn it as Adult Link and proceed to use it to trigger a number of events in the game world. The man teaching you states he actually heard the song seven years ago from that mean kid that messed up the windmill. Turns out this kid is you, as when you go back in time to your younger self, you have to play this song to the man to trigger the said messing up in the first place. But wait! How could Link possibly teach the man the song when younger Link didn't know it? You had to go to the future to be taught the song by him first, so you'd then have the knowledge to pass it on later. But later is earlier in the timeline, I mean it just doesn't add up. We can say that time is linear for Link, but how could the man possibly possess the knowledge of something he didn't obtain until after you did? How could child you know a song you didn't learn until later in your own life? Oh god, my aching brain. And number one, lightsabers are never really lightsabers. All Star Wars games. The rule. Weapon of a Jedi Knight and not as clumsy or random as a blaster, lightsabers have been slicing things off other things since 1977. Seriously, its first use in combat is the removal of an arm. Literally made of a beam of focused energy irradiating from a pressurized kyber crystal, there's no universe in which this blade meeting anything in its path doesn't cut right through it. But wait! Can you name any Star Wars game where decapitations or limb slicing is a thing? Even the newest Star Wars Battlefront 2, while refraining from making it so you could do lightsaber combos like Star Wars Force Unleashed, ugh, has them be a one-hit kill baton, rather than showing off any necessary visual flourish. Naturally, the reason is that Disney don't want children's memories of Star Wars to be awash in showerings of limbs and screams, but even the latest movie Solo had Chewie rip off a soldier's arms, so it's not completely outside the realm of possibility. Either way, how about we start treating one of fiction's greatest creations with the utilization it deserves?